Um, I, I want to change this graphic bit. Give it a bit more saturation. Also, the leaves can use a bit more saturation. So that is, is more vibrant and more, yeah. Just a nicer scene overall. More saturation for leaves again. Um, change the grass a bit again, a bit darker, a bit less saturated. Well, I don't know. Greens are very hard to do. Just try, try a lot of things and you will eventually get to a point where the color looks right. Okay, I'm pleased with this. Next thing I'm going to do is I go to the world tab over here, hit use nodes and select the bluish kind of darkish color. What that does is, you can see it in a second, our world gets blue. Um, we can still change the background if you really want to. The blue looks kind of good for this one, surprisingly. Um, but it also makes the shadows bluish. And if you look in the, um, well, in real life, you can see shadows are blue. That is because the light from the sky essentially lights up um, everything that isn't yeah, hit by the sun. So bluish kind of um, shadows are just natural to us. It's a bit too bright. I want to have more shadows in there, so I'll just make it darker. It's very hard to get the right tone, but well, I guess this works. Um, but I don't want to have a bluish background after this, so I will go to Film and hit Transparent. What that does, if we now start rendering it again, we will see that the background of our image is actually this kind of, well, transparent thing. So that is very good for like adding backgrounds later on. I now want to do the final render, so let's do the um, adjustments for that. I will go to 100% resolution, so that it is really good. I will go to sampling. And sampling essentially um, says uh, how much work Blender puts into creating these images. If you look at these images, you can see um, there are very grainy parts in here. And the higher you set the samples, the, uh, the less grainy it gets. But the more time it takes. So let's go to 100, that should work fine. Um, also another thing on performance, if you're rendering on uh, GPU, so your graphics card, I will recommend to you to use 256 uh, as um, the well, tile size. I don't want to explain to you what that means. And if you're on CPU, use 16. That's just the um, fastest way to do it. Don't want to explain why or what's beneath that, but well, I'm going to render this again by hitting F12. Okay, here we go. This took my PC uh, six minutes to render, which is quite fine. Um, if you're going further into Blender, you will see that six minutes is essentially nothing for a good scene. So I guess we are really done. Um, to sum up, uh, the things that you can see here pretty much are just two types of houses, two types of trees, one bush, and a bit of landscape, nothing else. Very easy to do, just arrange them in a nice way and it will look fine. So let's save this image and give it some, because even though um, 
beginners might not want to take more time to post process uh, their images, it's a really, really important thing to do. So I will go to my um, folder where I save this image. Oh, uh, by the way, saving the image is just by hitting F3, selecting the path you want to have and typing the name over here and just hit enter. Why did it? Huh, okay, Blender crashed and I didn't save. That's not good, but we have the image, right? <laughs> okay, so um, what you learn from that is save. <laughs> For God's sake, save from now and then. It's it's really important. Um, I think there's a way to recover that. Let's, I will uh, stop the recording for a second. Okay, sadly, I wasn't able to recover it. So I suppose you guys have to create new scenes and just show me what you got. But we still have the image, <laughs> luckily. So let's just um, open this with GIMP. GIMP is a very nice and uh, free image editing software but you can do almost um, all of the steps I'm showing you here in every other image editing program as well. So first thing I want to do is want to adjust, this is German by the way, so sorry for that, brightness and contrast. Normally turn up contrast a bit, brightness as well because well, you don't use the whole range of um, colors. So let's see if that improved the image. And I suppose it did. Let's um, look at the saturation and the colors. Well, let's see how increasing the overall saturation looks like. Yeah, that might work, but I want to decrease the green tones a bit, so. Okay, well, as I told you, greens are sometimes more yellow than green, so. Very interesting, you can essentially just change the greenish kind of tones. Make them a bit greener, a bit brighter, no, not that much, but maybe even darker, no. Okay, just some small adjustments. Then I'm going to add a new layer and move this below the other one so that we can get a nice, I will go with a white background maybe even a black background. I don't know. Let's try some colors. Um, the opposite from green would be red, so maybe even a back, uh, a reddish kind of background might work. Well, that's way too red, but maybe something like this. Sure. Or maybe something like this. Yeah. Yes, I like that. Um, but I also want to have a nice white kind of circle behind the image. So I'm going to get my brush and set the size to 2000. just add a nice kind of white effect behind it. Okay, but maybe hmm, I'm not sure about the color. So I mean, you can just set a color and then 
just move this and see what looks best for you. But I think this might look even better. Let's see how it changed from this to this. Way better. What I'm always doing then is I'm adding my sign. So if you don't have one yet, um, well, get yourself one. Or oh wait, that didn't. Okay, didn't work the first time, but. Okay, there we go. Oh wait, I, oh no, it works, surprisingly. Um, and then I'm going to invert the colors because white looks better on this background. Export this, and tutorial, I always name them, sign, so then I know that this is the edited version. Okay, and there we go. Now we can um, have a look at the image. Where was it? Project, slow poly, and there we go. Now I will publish this, the tutorial and everything, and we are good to go. And hopefully you were able to create great scenes as well. If you were, just uh, send me a link or a picture. I'm always interested into what you guys are doing and learning from my tutorials. Also, if you have further questions, just go and ask or if you want to step further into low poly modeling, you can just watch my other tutorials. So yeah, thank you for staying here with me and see you next time. Bye.